What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be bringing you the most asked for kit swap design. So I've got another one of these videos on my channel obviously the kit swap with Neymar and then I got another one with Ronaldo but this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to pop it up on the screen right now so you can see what we're doing. Obviously you would have seen the thumbnail so you know you're going to have a good idea of what we're doing but it's going to be the Darwin Nunes kit swap I made um, for his move to Liverpool. So obviously he's moved there now but I made this you know a couple of days before he actually the transfer was agreed and everything. Uh, it's a very simple kit swap so all we're going to need is like two images and we're just going to cut it out. As you can see it's sort of ripping across his like kit so it's a nice little effect and something a little bit different than doing like a proper basic kit swap um i think it's just a nice little way of like sort of modernizing it and actually giving it a little bit more context as well and a little bit of texture just something to make it look a little bit more gritty because you know kit swaps aren't meant to look perfect obviously because <laughs> they're not actually in the kit you've got to sort of make the images work um so given it that extra bit of gritty texture i think it's going to work really nicely so hopefully you're looking forward to the video thank you for all supporting the recent videos i know i haven't been uploading as recent lately but it's because i've been finishing uni and you know i've been taking a little bit of a break to be honest because i needed uh to reset so um let's get straight into the video i won't rabble on any more probably a few of you in here who are in the discord so make sure you do join that obviously the link is down below and check out the patreon if you are interested in that and without further ado let's get straight into the video so guys First things first, you're gonna to wanna to download this texture pack. So the link is obviously gonna be down below like every other video. Now it's gonna come with four things. So it's gonna come with an image uh, of Nunes, an image of Van Dyke in the new kit, and then an image of the logo and a background. So all these are gonna be useful for what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna take these images and we're actually gonna start cutting them out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new document first. So new document, this is gonna be 2160 by 2700. Uh, 300 re resolution, I usually use that because it's the best quality and then I click create. So we've got our document here. So we're going to drag our image of Nunez across first and we're just going to sort of position him where we actually think he's going to be in the design. So I'm going to have him about there. You don't want him too big because obviously you want to make sure that, you know, he doesn't like look like he's flying off the page basically. You want to make sure it's quite um, in, in focus. So first things first, we're just going to go quick select, select subject and this is going to be pretty quick. You know, obviously I'm not gonna run through this now. I'm just gonna quickly cut him out and I will be back with you. Okay guys, so we have cut Nunez out now. So I've got him all cut out. Now I've done that pretty quickly. You know, you can take your time with whatever image you're gonna be using for this. Um, but I'm gonna do it quite quickly just because I don't wanna keep you guys waiting. We wanna to get to the kit swap bit because that is gonna be the main bit of this design. Got our image here. So now we're gonna set the background up. So we're gonna go for a solid color. Now this one's gonna be quite like a, a dark black. So it's gonna be OC, OC, OE or zero, C, zero, C, zero, E. Click that and then we're gonna see we've got him nicely placed in the design. Um, and then one, we're gonna duplicate this. So we're gonna go Command J and that's gonna duplicate this layer. So Command J. And then we're going to select this uh, lighter gray. So this is going to be like a light bluey gray. And then we're just going to invert that uh, or command backspace. And then we're just going to make a nice big brush. And we're going to make a glow behind him. So you can set this to screen if you'd like. Um, do that. And then you're going to get your white brush. And you're just going to click a few times. And we, oh, wow. Make sure you've got a uh, soft brush as well. And then we're just going to click a few times and make a nice little glow in the middle behind him. There we go. So if I turn that on and off now, you can see we've got a nice little glow behind him. Just something extra to make the design look a little bit more, you know, interesting. So we've got that. Uh, you can probably keep it at normal if you want. Probably keep it at normal. Don't need screen. We've got all that done now. So we're going to go back now and we're going to get the image of Van Dyke. So this is where we're going to need to cut this kit out as well, obviously. Um, so I'm going to probably, what am I going to do? I'm going to make it a little bit bigger in here. So make it fairly big, as big as you think you'll need for the, obviously the kit, because you don't want to lose quality. So make it fairly big. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all this off just so it's not distracting. And I'm going to position that there and I'm going to select my pen tool. So the pen tool is going to be the most accurate cutting tool that you've got. So I usually use this for the kit swap bit. So obviously the new kit, because obviously you want that to look really nice and clean. So. We're going to use the pen tool. You're going to change it from shape to path. 
and then you're going to go in and you're just going to start obviously making your cut so you this is going to be pretty accurate um if you don't know how to use the pen tool there's plenty of tutorials online for you um it's really not that hard and plus it is a really good skill to learn because you can do a lot more of the pen tool than you can do with like quick selection stuff and it's a lot more accurate i find so you may as well learn it and uh, make sure that it's in your skill set. So I'm going to probably just go and cut all this out now. I might skip this in the video bit because it's a little bit tedious for you to watch um, and you don't really need to see it. But I'm just going to say this now. You don't need to cut most of this bottom bit out because obviously if you can see in the previous design, we've ripped the bottom of the shirt. So you don't need to be too accurate around the bottom here. We're just going to do that fairly quick and make sure that we're getting the shirt and the sleeves bit right but the bottom of the shirt isn't going to matter because as you'll see later we're going to cut that out anyway so don't worry about that too much so we're just going to come around here now make sure we get the top of the shirt done make sure we get the top done because the top you are going to be able to see so now as you can see we've got this nice little selection of the shirt it looks really nice clean whatever got exactly what we need Great, so now you can see up here, you can make a selection. So if you click selection now, uh, you can see feather radius and all this stuff. You don't need to worry about that, just click okay. And now that line that we've made has made a selection. So it's just like using the quick selection tool. And uh, all you're gonna do now is you're gonna go command J or control J on a Windows. And what that's gonna do is duplicate that layer. So if I turn the image of Van Dyke off now, now we have the kit. So we got that cut out, that's all fine. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my move tool and I'm gonna drag this into our image so you're going to want to put this above him now obviously it looks a little bit big at the moment so don't worry too much about that we can resize this um so you want to sort of make sure you get it fairly a fairly decent size it's obviously going to look a little bit odd because it's not it's not the perfect shape but that is why we have tools like puppet warp which is what we're going to use now i'm going to bring this back down to zero angle and i'm going to sort of position this around here so you can reduce the fill a little bit just so you can see sort of just so you can see sort of the um, the underneath and obviously where the angle is and all that stuff and see where the kit the proper kit lies and what we're going to do now is we're just going to position it probably around there that's probably good and we're going to convert this to a smart object now when you convert it to a smart object it's going to save the puppet warp uh, effects that we're going to add so if you go to edit and you can see puppet warp right there so click that and you're going to be presented with this i don't know grid system i guess you could call it and what you need to do with this you need to click and you can make a point so when you make a point you can move it around so that's pretty much that so i'm just going to delete that one really quick and i'm just going to go in and make some points on the positions that need to be moved so we're going to obviously this one's going to need to be bended around here so we're just going to add one there probably one here as well so we can drag it down like that probably going to add one up here that's going to be nice then we're just going to pull that in a bit. Now this is going to look, it's not going to look perfect. Let's just put it that way. I don't want you guys to think this is going to look perfect because it really won't. Because this kit isn't meant to fit him. So make sure that you're doing your best to, to, you know, just to get it look as close to what it would if it was a proper kit. Um, but if you can't, you know, just practice. So the puppet warp tool is really good. As you can see, I've already sort of sort of merged the, uh, the kit round him uh, okay we're just going to pull it in here a little bit more and now as you can see at the bottom you know we got the logo here so i'm just going to click ok on that so it's not warped so the logo is a little bit high so really here we're going to need to pull the collar down to so pull this up here now again we're not going to see a lot of this so you don't need to worry too much about it because we're not actually going to see it um if i just drag that down there that's good there move that up a little bit just so it's covering the angle of his shoulder but yeah, as you can see, this is partly why it's partly why I use this ripped effect on this one because you don't want to see most of the kit, to be honest. Um, you just want to make sure that you've got the right angle and everything, uh, you know, like the, um, the, the middle bit, right? So the logo looks fine and all that type of thing. So you want to make sure that's good. Um, but apart from that, you don't really need to worry too much about this. Make sure that that's okay. If I click okay now and... Uh, go in there and increase it to 100% and come back out. Sorry, I didn't need to do that. Okay, so it looks a little bit odd, doesn't it? Uh, the logo here is looking a little bit odd. So we want to click OK on that. So that's sort of OK. Now, I know it looks very basic and not great, but it's fine because we're going to rip half of we're going to rip the top off. So you won't see the top bit on his on his neck or shoulders. And we're going to rip the bottom off here. So you won't see that either. The main bit I'm worried about now is probably this little bit here where his arm is like that there you go so you want to just push that out a little bit maybe bring this across and then click okay so that's not too bad there's a few bits here 
with the uh, arm, which look a little bit odd. So I'm just going to bring that in a little bit just so it looks like it's actually going around his arm. That's fine. And then this bit out here, we might have to sort of layer mask that out a little bit. Okay, so obviously I've got these pins here. So I don't, I don't know if I want them by the logo so much because the logo is going to be... The, wow, the two logos are going to be the main bits that we're actually going to see. So we don't really want to worry about them too much. Uh, or, 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 or like make them look a little bit distorted because that's when it starts to look a little bit odd for that. So you can see we've got quite a few pins in there. We've moved it around a little bit, merged it onto his body a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. That's pretty solid. I'm just going to make sure now that we've got it around the shoulder here because this is going to be one of the main areas that we are going to see his, uh, his, his kit. So we want to make sure that that's looking probably as, as close to natural as it can be so there's going to be bits here that we're not actually going to see so this bit of the kit so if i just go like just make my brush a little bit smaller just go like that and paint some of this away so we're not actually going to see like most of this bit of the shoulder so you can you can pretty much paint that away if you if you get what i mean so you don't need to worry about that too much so there you go as you can see it just looks like his shoulders faded out but obviously at the top here you can see just a little bit of his shoulder so let's get rid of that <laughs> it looks very odd but it's gonna look fine. So we're gonna just quickly go back into our layer mask and paint away this bit of his arm. Make sure that looks just looks a little bit more natural. Okay, probably make this a little bit smaller. By doing this, it just it just looks like his arms sort of um you know just blended in behind him. Something like that. But anyway, once we add this effect, you won't you won't even notice it anyway. So we are going to convert this to a smart object again. So now everything, the puppet walk we've done is all in the image and everything so you can't edit it no more unless you go into it um so that's fine now what we're going to do is we're going to add another layer mask to this so this is where we start ripping away the texture so i'm going to add a layer mask now these brushes that i've got um i will try and find a link down below for them they are called brayer texture brushes so these are like they're like ink uh roller brushes so if i zoom out a little bit and then make them a little bit smaller you better see what they are. So they're like brushes like this. So if I change this to black, it's obviously going to cut away half of his kit. So this is the type of thing I've used uh, to do this this job. Um, let me just see how that looks. So we're probably going to use, I don't know which one I used to be honest, to begin with. This one's probably quite good. Yeah, we'll use this one. So obviously I will put a link down below for this brush if I can find it. If not, you're going to have to sort of find your own sort of texture brush. This is what I use to do it. So you just want to get a brush. You're going to go to your rotation tool. For me, if you're using these brushes, you're going to sort of put them on an angle like that. And then we're just going to sort of find the sweet spot. Make them a little bit smaller. Just so you can actually see what you're going to be uh, cutting out. And then we're probably just going to go over the shoulder like this. Okay. So then obviously you want to do the same on the bottom. So it's a little bit like that. And then you can paint bits back in. You can obviously cut bits out that you want to then change the opacity to like 30% and sort of test it out, fade little bits in like this. You see what I mean? And it just sort of adds that nice gradual effect. And then you can play around with that. You can put it back up to 100% and then continue cutting bits off. You can flip it back to the other side and do uh, do the same again. Just quickly do that. Now I'm just going to change this to 30%. I'm just going to bring some of the red back in and then I'm just going to start fading it gradually away. This is a really nice technique keep clicking and it just makes it just makes the cut a little bit cooler so you want to make sure that you've got it off all the shoulders like that but that's pretty that's pretty good i'm just going to flip it back upside down again make my brush a little bit smaller this time put the opacity back up to 100 oh no i didn't mean to do that i want it on a white and then again same again there you go okay so that's pretty nice that's that's to be fair i'm pretty happy with that that's pretty good now i've got the kit obviously ripped across so we don't really need to worry about that too much. Now we can, if you don't want to see the logo below the standard charted one there, you can just go in and obviously paint that away. You know, and that one under his arm here. So you can paint that one away as well. So now we've got a nice little sort of ripped across his uh, body effect. But obviously you're going to be wondering where the red is in the background. Because obviously in the, uh, the one I did before, you have a red background which merge across with the same rip. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get that. So we're going to go solid color. Now I'm going to pick this red that I've already got cut out. And this red is going to be 
A7-1214. So we're gonna select that. So obviously we've got the red background, looks great. And then we're just gonna drag this layer mask that we created on the kit over to this red. So you're gonna hold Alt on your keyboard uh, and drag it across and just drop it. So okay, you can see the rip we got now. It's a nice little effect, but obviously it's not cutting out the bottom bit because we only did the kit. So it's obviously gonna be a nice rip through the middle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back, you're gonna select your brush, and this time we're gonna start painting away the bottom bits. Now you can leave it like this if you want, if you think it's a cool effect but I think it looks a lot cleaner when it's uh, more like um, just, just the middle, I guess you could say. Now you can make it a little bit rough and a little bit like obscure, uh, but I think stuff like this looks a lot cooler. So now we've got a nice little, let's just, let's just work on that actually a bit, sorry. Uh, let's just go for that, yeah. That's nice. So now we've got a nice little abstract rip going through the middle. Uh, I'm just gonna layer mask out a little bit of Nunez because I can see his arms pushing through on the left side. And I don't really wanna see that on the black, on the on the red, sorry. So I'm gonna go back in. I'm just gonna cut away this bit here. So as you can see, just makes the kit look a little bit cleaner, you know what I mean? So again here, we do the same. Just cut away his arm. And then it just makes it look like a more of a seamless transition. You see what I mean? So. By doing that, if I just enable it, you can see obviously there's bits here coming over the red. But if I enable it, it's all gone and it just looks a little bit smoother. So again here, I'm just gonna fade that out. There we go. Okay, so we've got the rip, we've got the background. Uh, we're gonna add one, oh, well, a few more things. Uh, we've got this logo here that I brought in. So I'm gonna bring this in, clip and mask it to the red background like that. Obviously it looks a bit odd like that. So we're gonna set it to overlay. Probably reduce it down to about 30. Yeah, about 30 is good. And now we've got a nice little abstract background with the logo, which just gives it a little bit of context. Obviously the club and everything, obviously you're gonna see it on the kit, but you want it in the background as well because it makes it feel like a complete design um, instead of something that's just a little bit random. Okay, so we've got the kit swap, we've got the background done, that's nice. Now we're gonna add a few effects to Nunez and obviously the kit because we wanna make it look a little bit more realistic and a little bit more merged um, than that. So we're just gonna group these two together. So you wanna select your kit, select Nunez and convert this to a smart object. Now we've got that together, we're gonna add some effects. So we're gonna go for neural filters first. Now this is gonna remove any JPEG um, artifacts or anything. You know, little, little like squares and stuff that look a little bit odd. So we're gonna get rid of those and we're just gonna let this run. So this will take probably a minute. If you don't have this, obviously you can use noise reduction in camera or filter, that works just as well. Um, but I really do recommend doing this first because it adds, you know, some really nice effects which you wouldn't always get in uh, camera all. So I'm just going to skip to the end when this is done. Okay guys, so this is done now. So we're going to click OK. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and uh, add a camera or filter to the kit. So we're just going to use one of the ones I've got saved. So this is going to be initial free. Now this is really simple. It's just very basic, you know, highlights, shadows, a little bit of texture and uh, some sharpening. So that's good. Got that done. That's nice. Now I'm just gonna add some effects. So I'm gonna select the image. So I'm gonna go Command and then just click on the image or Control if you're on Windows. So you're gonna go to Select, Color Range, and then Highlights. I'm just gonna select all the highlights. Then you're gonna do a Brightness and Contrast, clip and mask it to it. Increase the brightness of this. Contrast as well. And then Feather it. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go slowly through this, guys, because I have shown this before in uh, both my skin retouch videos. So if you want to learn how I do this properly, go check those out. There'll be a link down below if you want to do that, or just go check out the channel. Um, they're really helpful videos, and I know a lot of people have learned a lot of tips from it because I've seen people using it. So that's good. Got the highlights and shadows done. Now we could do um, eye saturation thing. So. Let's go in here, brighten the eyes up a little bit. This will just make it look 10 times better. I recommend you do this with all your designs. So we're gonna brighten the eyes up and the bottom of the teeth. Let's do that. Hue and saturation, zero. Drag that one across. There we go. Brilliant. So that's that done. Got his eyes all changed color. Uh, and the last thing I'm gonna do is add the rim light. So the rim light to this one really does look good. So do recommend you add that to some of your designs. Now for this, I'm just gonna go around. Oh, no, make sure you got 30% opacity for this one because you don't want it too strong. Go around and just paint on his arms, on the bottoms of his kit. To be fair, this is a really nice kit to work with, actually. I was tempted to make a poster of this before he actually left, but he's obviously left now, so it'd be a little bit pointless doing it now. I guess it could be a farewell thing. Okay, so just go around the edge, nice rim light. 
Click OK. And now reduce this probably to like 70%. Don't want it too bright. That's good. So now we've got the kit swap done, we've got the background done, we've got the effects done on Nunez. Um, we're going to add one final thing now, which is going to be a camera photo to the final design. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Command Shift Option E to make a smart uh, screenshot. Sorry, convert that to a smart object, and then go into Camera Filter. So what I did with this in the Camera Filter was I boost the sharpening up to about 40 and then a little bit of noise reduction to about 15%. This is just so it makes the whole image look a lot smoother. And then curves, I boosted this one up because it's quite a bright image and I want it, you know, I want it to look light and exciting because, you know, it's, it's signifying that it's, you know, it's an exciting time for the club. They just bought this player for, you know, 80 odd million. You want it to look bright and exciting. So then we go to our basic section. So highlights definitely boost those up. Shadows, you can decrease them a little bit. Uh, whites, shadows, same thing with the blacks and whites. Clarity, I put this up to about 20. Texture, about probably about 40 to be honest with texture. Uh, and then a little bit of dehaze. Saturation, you can play around with that yourself. Um, that's all nice. And then a little bit of exposure, probably about 0.5 exposure. And now for the background, obviously in my one, it's quite bluey. So I what I did was add a probably a I'd probably say about probably about a 10% temperature. So now you can see it's got a nice little blue bit on the gray background and the black kit. So it just makes it look a little bit different, a little bit nicer. So minus 10 on the temperature just makes it look a little bit different and maybe a little bit of vibrance as well. So curves done, details done. Uh, color mixer, you can play around with the reds if you want. Completely up to you and the blues, obviously. Color grading, don't need to worry about that for a kit swap. Um, and then effects, we're going to add a nice little bit of grain to the background and a vignette. There we go. Click OK. There you go, guys. That is how I created my Nunez kit swap. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know, I know it's been quite long and I'm sorry if I rambled on a little bit, but I'm sure you got the idea of how I've actually done it. You know, it doesn't look perfect because I've done it quite quickly in this, but obviously in my one that I showed you at the start, you can get it to look really nice. So you got the idea now. Hopefully I'll have the brushes in the link down below so you'll be able to download those and have a play around with those. Get cracking on the designs, obviously test it out for yourself. Hit a like button if you did enjoy this video. Obviously, it really helps out the YouTube uh, algorithm and gets the video shown to more people so we can keep doing these videos. Um, but yeah, guys, happy kip swaps. Hope you enjoy doing them, and I'll see you next time.